And now let's all sing the international. <laughs> This is the original French of a famous socialist song, famous revolutionary song. The words were written in May 1871. Paris Commune had fallen. A man, I think he was in his 40s at the time, had been elected mayor of one of the districts of Paris, but now he was fleeing for his life. He was in hiding, Eugène Portier, I think that's how he pronounced his name. And that very month of May, 1871, he writes six long verses and a chorus, calling on all the hardworking people of the entire world to overthrow their masters. And he was quite confident that they would, soon. A few years later, the book happens into the hands of a younger man, Pierre de Jeter. He led a chorus in his factory, and I'm told in a basement apartment on his pump organ, he made up a melody. Uh, this young musician, had a hit song, at least in certain circles. It spread throughout France, it spread throughout Europe. They translated it in dozens of languages, maybe hundreds for all I know. It was sung all around the world, still is, by socialists, communists, anarchists. All sorts of people sing this song. International. Well, it was tremendously exciting, and you, you know, have the clenched fist. We'd had these huge parades every May Day, but at every meeting you'd open and close it with that. It was sung at meetings, at demonstrations, at rallies. On May Day, for example, when people would march, and the May Day demonstrations had convinced me early on as a child that there would soon be socialism in the United States. The first May Day demonstration I ever went to had about 10,000 people marching into Union Square. The second demonstration I went to had 20,000 people marching into Union Square. The third had 40,000 people marching into Union Square. I therefore became convinced as I sat down with a pencil and paper that in a period of about 15 years, the whole population of the United States would be marching with the very same song singing the international. In 1912, it was sung in many different languages simultaneously by the strikers in Lawrence, Massachusetts. The famous strike led by the Wobblies. Big Bill Hayward came up there to speak to them. Nobody thought they could stick together. They had Irish and German and Italian and Polish and all. And they all sang in their own language this song. It became the official anthem of the Soviet Union in 1917. Of course, I know this song from my childhood. It was the most popular from all songs in the world in Russia. 
We played, of course, in the revolution in our yard, and uh, it was a big deal for us because uh, our fathers and mothers uh, sang this song. And for us, it was uh, a big deal to repeat this song more and more. The first time I met the International was as a young boy, 13 years old, in Tel Aviv. I recall the first of May in Haifa where thousands and thousands of members of our movement, the Histadrut, marched throughout the city with red flags and banners singing songs of work and labor. And the members of our kibbutz uh, fought uh, the exploiters and participated in strikes. And there were occasions to sing the international and uh, hopefully to uh, build a homeland and a country where the workers would be the people who would share uh, the wealth of the country. So the international spoke to me as a Jew, as a Jewish person. I woke up into this world and I knew the words of the song. It was sang to me actually like a lullaby. And I, you know, I was a baby. I didn't know the difference between Brahms lullaby and the internationale. And somehow I loved uh, the inter internationale better than Brahms lullaby. My father's name is Juan Feleo, and he was a teacher. And he used to speak to the landlord in behalf of the farmers. And eventually, he had about 60,000 farmers who would come and listen to him and bring their grievances. But he was all by himself. And then he heard the Internationale, and then he decided that he would translate it into Filipino so that everybody would understand that there is hope, that there is a way out of this bondage, that there is a way for the farmers to organize and be heard. And um, I could not understand why my father was arrested and eventually killed for this song. But the song is a song that can be heard in the rice fields. Young boys riding atop their carabaos, going down the river, women washing clothes, farmers doing harvest. They, this song will be sung. I dropped out of high school in my senior year to go work in a cannery in San Jose to help organize a union, which we did. And a strike was called, which was totally uh, destroyed as a result of uh, extraordinary police terror. Every meeting was broken up, every outdoor demonstration was attacked and broken up. And then I uh, went to the Imperial Valley in 1934 to help organize the uh, migratory lettuce pickers at that point. I was arrested and spent 180 days in the Imperial Valley Jail. And one of the ways in which I passed the time was teaching my fellow prisoners how to sing radical songs. The strikers were part of that uh, generation of Mexicans who uh, had grown up with the Mexican Revolution, so that both the strikers and then the women prisoners uh, also knew the international in Spanish. Um, it was just kind of a, an immediate means of communication, of identification across language barriers, across country barriers, this song that, that bridged all the countries of the world. suffering from the depression 
there was real starvation everywhere in the world. In some countries, like in Germany, fascism began. It was ruled by brute military force, and based on this demagoguery, it was possible to achieve not only power within Germany, but strength within fascist elements all over the world. In Spain, they tried the same thing. The military called for the overthrow of the uh, Republican government of Spain and uh, staged a coup. And from over 40 countries, volunteers began to arrive in Spain. Men and women could come and pick up arms and fight the fascists. The first time that happened in the history of fascism. And in the United States, the cry went up, what about us? Why can't we go to Spain? There was no way I was going to stay out of this conflict in Spain. Uh, I saw action as an infantryman and was wounded in the course of it. And as a result of being wounded, wound up in a hospital at Matero. In the hospital, uh, what we did for entertainment, of course, was uh, have entertainers come out and sing and a couple do flamencos and things like that. One day when they ran out of entertainers and we had to fall back on our own resources, the chief of entertainment called on us all to come up on the stage one at a time and sing the international in whatever language was our own language. And well over 40 languages were represented on the stage. Each one would sing a few words in their own language and then go on to the next one, or well, we would have been there all night. And then finally, everybody sang the song together in their own languages, so that we heard it sung in, in Javanese, and we heard it sung in Tamil, and we heard it sung in Hindi, in English, in French, in German, in Russian, in Spanish, in every which language you could think of, and more, and many, many more. It was sung in Yiddish as well. Arise, you, those of you who were slaves. At least through the 20s, anarchists, socialists, and communists, and perhaps other trade unionists, simply uh, sang the international. But at some point, uh, motion picture newsreels and then ultimately television, began to show Red Army parades in, in Moscow. Somehow in my mind, the International uh, lost its early association of a general radical song and somehow became a Soviet song. And for people who reveled in the tanks and Red Square and the mausoleum and Lenin's tomb, and the scowling Stalin, you know, the great father, I'm sure that the international was very stirring. But for non-communists, the international began to pick up a pejorative overtone. One trouble of making something official, I think it's worse than banning it, it tends to uh, cramp its style. It was sung briskly first, then they slowed it down to make it ponderous. Pum, pa, pum. Pum, pa, pum, pum, pum. Becomes very much an establishment kind of a song. Well, I uh, remember once I was at a Central Committee meeting of the Communist Party, and someone brought in a, uh, a Jamaican reggae-ized view, a version of the uh, Communist International, with all the beats, with a little Bob Marley, with a little Jimmy Cliff, and so forth. And uh, I, quite frankly, uh, uh, dug it. But uh, I can remember some of the comrades, some of the older comrades, and, and uh, just could not understand how this song could be bastardized. There is considerable tension within the international uh, based on a portion of the text. Uh, you know, when Potier wrote the international, he used the uh, lines, at least in French, uh, roughly translated, no more traditions, chains shall bind us. 
the notion was that working people in breaking with capitalism or imperialism would wipe the tablets clean. That is, would wipe away the superstitions of the past, the religions of the past, and as free men and women, you know, would hail a new dawn, a red dawn. Well, interestingly, uh, you cannot get your act together or function with any passion if you don't believe in certain traditions. I have an ambivalent feeling about the words of the song. Uh, on one hand, uh, I, I still remain as moved as I was when I was a youngster emotionally by hearing a stirring call to fight, to struggle, to challenge. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there's a sentence in that song, no more traditions change shall bind us, that I uh, had a kind of ironic double take on because I felt one of the problems with the movement was that precisely traditions change had bound us and that all too often uh, concepts were accepted, went unchallenged, simply because it had always been accepted. Arise, ye prisoners of starvation. Keep it, наш разум возмущенный, и в смертный бой вести готов. Олам яша на дейхай сад на хрима. Лая на дин сили сиил. El mundo va a cambiar de base. You have been not, you shall be all. Tis the final conflict. Reprends-nous, et demain, international shall be the human race. Boom, boom. That's my jazz, too. The words that this will be the last battle, the last war, something so many people have wished has not come to life yet. Many times when I sang this song, I really hoped, I really believed that there would be a time that there would be no wars. That's something maybe when we were young, we could sing without thinking twice. Stavai Sibiriu zakalonni O you know, this song reminds me of my childhood, when we believe in the words of international. And you can understand me when we remind of our childhood, it's very important for our heart. That is why when I hear now international, I feel the beautiful melody again and again. But I feel the tragedy too. The tragedy of my father, he was a communist, and when he was very young, he believed in this, but he understood that all this story, this is a false story, and he told me about it. That is why when I hear now international, the international, my feelings is very complicated. I feel in this my childhood, but I feel in it the tragedy of all our life.
The tragedy is that people who sang the international went in 1936 to Spain, and many have given their lives. The tragedy is that the people who were in power in Russia, in the Soviet Union, were not worthy of the cause that people gave their lives to. I know that it's almost a mission impossible to try to uh, teach younger people all over the world something about a time that workers all over the world really believed that they could stretch out their hands to one another and work together for a better world. time I heard it, I was thinking to myself, this is kind of corny. We have a, a group song, you know, that's, that's the first thing that went through my mind. Um, second time I heard it, I, I heard the words and understood what was going on and what the thoughts were. And now when I hear it, I have 50 different images that run through my mind. I may be thinking about the Abraham Lincoln brigades uh, fighting fascists in Spain. I may be thinking about um, the people in Chiapas. I may be thinking about people in Virginia or elsewhere that are fighting for justice. That song, you know, gave them strength. It gave them a feeling of being connected with generations before them and with their brothers and sisters in, in other countries. I don't think any students who sing the International on Tiananmen Square uh, were thinking about communism or socialism. I think we're singing international to reassure ourselves, to feel that we're part of a greater, larger, propitial human movement towards perfection. I never pay much attention to the word of international, but the melody of the song always calls me into a very special mood. And for a long time, I was thinking what it is. And I think I, I sort of know it now. I think this captures the essence of the traditional Chinese thought, which is Confucianism, and their convictions of fighting for what you believe in. And if necessary, they also need to sacrifice themselves. And their sacrifice will be rewarded in history. Us. Walls of hatred, nor walls of stone. Come greet the dawn and stand beside us. We'll live together or we'll die alone. In our world. I came to write a new version of the International after being encouraged by Pete Seeger at the Vancouver Folk Festival. This was uh, in 1989, just after uh, the Tiananmen Square um, episode. And, um, we were all aware that the, the Chinese students had sang the International in Tiananmen Square, and that's why he wanted to sing it at the, the uh, folk festival. So I said, well, I'd love to come and sing with the people. I know the British lyrics, which are different, and also they're very archaic to sing. I mean, it is an old song. It's a very old song, but it's picked up a lot of baggage on the way you know, the baggage of state communism. But I, I have argued with people that it's the baggage that we need to get rid of and not the actual spirit of the song itself. So with this idea, I, I wrote a few more verses. Stand up, all victims of oppression, for the tyrants fear your might. Don't cling so 
are hard to your possessions For you have nothing if you have no rights Let racist ignorance be ended I think we're at a time in now in our politics where we in a, an interesting position where it's down to this generation to redefine what socialism and what communism means in a post-Marxist sense. And I think re-evaluating the old culture is important. And when we find something that still has meaning as a, almost as an icon, the international, I think it's a good time to, to perhaps take it away from being an icon and, and put some new lyrics on it and see see if it if it can translate into the into the 21st century has to do is look around the world today at, at a economy that is in crisis everywhere in the world uh, to know that those struggles haven't stopped that the shape of those struggles uh, continues as a as a fierce struggle uh, for justice and as long as that struggle is there and it will be there uh, the the dream of a world in which uh, man's exploitation of man will end when the inhumanity of humans to humans will, will cease, when oppression will disappear, is the strongest dream. And unless one dreams beautiful dreams, one lives a very dismal life. But that there will someday be again a movement throughout the world that stands up and says, we are for a world in which the exploitation of human beings can no longer take place. That dream, I am sure, will be revived and relived. And if there's a world here, a hundred years from now, I'm not sure there will be. If there's a world here, this song will be part of that world. And the socialist dreams of making one world out of many peoples in some way will have to come to pass. When we find